Welcome everyone. Um, I'm Vignesh Ravichandran, currently working as an engineering manager at uh, Cloudflare. You can find me online at wiki28 and also you can email me if you have any questions directly at admin at wiki28.dev. Today the presentation is going to be how HAProxy is helping Cloudflare, especially on the Postgres side, to achieve load balancing and high availability. The presentation focuses mostly on Postgres, but the ideas can be replicated to other database management systems like Mongo or, or MySQL. First, to begin with, we will see how HAProxy is helping with the load balancing of the read traffic. Then the next half of the presentation is going to be on how HAProxy uses us to avoid multi-master scenario. As you might be aware, in any enterprise setup, uh, we have a primary database and then we have a bunch of replicas. These replicas people mainly use for um, high availability purpose. You know, if, if, if the primary goes down, then they can promote one of the replicas to become a new primary. But the problem is it's, it's not the efficient use of your resources because you have like a bunch of replicas sitting around and they are not doing any purpose other than just being available in case of a disaster. So Postgres has this nice feature called hot standby, where we can use the replicas to also serve read-only traffic. Uh, in our typical setup, we have like a five replicas, and we use uh, the round robin method, um, a default setting from HA proxy load balancing setup to load balance the traffic. And also there are, you know, um, bunch of criteria that we use to define whether a replica is healthy or unhealthy. The criteria first one is replication lag. As you can imagine, since it's a primary and a replica, there is always a chance for replication lag. And then the next one, the obvious one, is the availability. If the replica itself is down, then we need to mark the replica as unhealthy, which basically means to take the replica out of the pool. Here we can see uh, an example or a picture of the typical setup of Postgres ecosystem at Cloudflare. It starts with the clients and we, we of course use PG Bouncer, that's our connection puller. Then uh, that's where the HA proxy comes in, the load balancing. So all the clients connect to PG Bouncer and then they all get sent to HA proxy, which then load balances the traffic across the Postgres servers which you can see from the, from the diagram here. There are other pieces like, you know, um, Stolon, ETCD, et cetera. Those are, those are what we use for, for automating the um, availability aspect, high availability aspect. Next, here is a quick example of uh, configuration. As you can see, there is a front end, which says Postgres read. Then the back end is Postgres replicas local. So the connections from PG Bouncer are sent to this front end, HA proxy, which then forwards the connection back to the back end. And inside the back end, we of course use the TCP check to do some basic checks. For example, the first one is we send a message called recovery mode. And then if a replica gives back the message, yes, then we know whether that's a primary or that's a replica. And then the other special message is, the, is healthy, followed by 180 seconds. That just says, what is the allowed replication lag? So 180 seconds, three minutes is the maximum allowed replication lag, and whether the replica is, is uh, you know, within that lag or not. And all this message parsing and health checks is done by a small daemon that runs along with the database servers. Beneath that is where we have a bunch of servers, which is nothing but the replicas. And uh, as you can see, it, it you know sends the routes, the connections to 5432, which is the default Postgres port. Yeah, things to be aware. Uh, HA proxy runs only on a proxy servers. You know, as you can imagine, there are two two kind of servers. One is the database servers where we have Postgres running and the health check daemon is running. Then there is a proxy server, and that's where the PG Bouncer and HA proxy are running. 
So yeah, as I went over in the previous slide, we can see how all the parsing is done. It uses TCP check, recovery mode, health, health 180 seconds. And even there are, you know, the specific SQL that we use. For example, the PG is in recovery, right? The function, the default function from Postgres, which gives the message whether it's a true or false, which tells us whether it's a primary or replica. Then the other, other, other SQL is, we take the current timestamp now function, and then reduce, subtract it with the with the lost replay timestamp when when there is a lost um, wall log replayed. So that gives us the delta of basically that's the replication lag. The other thing is the front ends can also be extended to fail back to the primary if there is no healthy replica. So imagine for whatever reason we have five replicas, but all five went down. Uh, no problem, still we can send all the read traffic back to the primary, right? Because primary can serve both reads and writes, but reads, meaning the replicas can't take writes. Oh, the last one is we don't have HA for HA proxy itself. <laughs> meaning like, oh no, well, what happens if this HA proxy process that's running on the proxy server itself is goes down? We had this question, so, but to be honest, we haven't seen so far, any case of HA proxy itself going down. So that kind of speaks for its uh, stand or quality. Next part is this is where how HA proxy is helping us with respect to avoiding multi master, right? And that's a typical scenario if you if you are running you know uh, a setup where there is more than one uh, Postgres server, right? As we can see is as we see in the first slide, we have primary and five replicas. So, you know, during a chaos or, or an incident, things can go wrong and we could potentially end up with multiple Postgres servers accepting writes. I mean, I, I, don't, I, think anyone, <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to be in that scenario, right? Like, we don't want to be taking writes on multiple places and then trying to consolidate is pretty much, uh, you know, no, no. So, no go. I um, want to just talk about how the failover itself is happening. Uh, again, to be clear, HA proxy doesn't do the failover itself. You know, that's being taken care of by our high availability system. In case if you are curious, we use Trollon, uh, another open source project to do this higher uh, elections and etc. During a failover, right, the primary is down. We detected whether the server went down or Postgres crashed, whatever reason is. Our HA system detects that the primary is down, then it picks a new replica, uh, one of the replicas, to become the new master. Uh, this is good if, if the primary, you know, vents down very cleanly, like server reboot, that's fine. But then there are things like uh, network partition, where, where it's not that the primary is down, but it's just that the primary is not able to reach the rest of the replicas, or it, it couldn't reach the quorum. So in those scenarios, the the world primary is still up. It's you know lingering around, but then we have we have promoted a new replica to become the new master. Then we need to somehow make sure that the rights don't go to the world primary. The other other scenario we have seen is you know failovers happening in a loop. Uh, you get primary first primary failed, uh, another replica promoted to new primary, and then within five to ten seconds something happens, then the, then there is another election. So there are multiple scenarios, you know, in a, in a practical world, we can, we can, we can get into this multi-master scenario and we wanted to avoid that. And we can see how HA proxy is, is helping us uh, achieve that. One quick notice that, you know, uh, as you all might be aware of this favorite uh, or famous theorem, cap, cap theorem, we are we are going precedence for consistency over availability, which means that you know we can we, we can avoid taking even rights if you if we can if we need to, but we prefer to be always more consistent. Here is a quick example of a configuration, um, kind of similar to what we saw earlier for the load balancing rate traffic. Same same front end uh, Postgres write which sends to the back end Postgres master local, and one of the conditions is that you know if this condition is successful or use this back end, only if 
that is uh, one one server or one output from this backend called Postgres master local. So I'm going over the backend Postgres master local. It's the recovery mode here and the expected string is no. Earlier it was yes because that's a replica. And since we are talking about a primary or a master, the recovery mode should be no. And then of course, healthy is yes, we expect them the master to be healthy. And as you can see, there are a bunch of database servers, right? Because we have a total of six uh, servers running in our setup and we want to pick, and, but there will be always only one primary server. Um, the, the note uh, on this slide is, as I mentioned, it takes the precedence of consistency over availability, which means for whatever reason, if there are more than one server passes this health check, then, then this backend won't be successful, which means that if, if there are two primary servers, then there won't be any writes happening to any of the servers. It's a trade-off, but we wanted to have this trade-off because as I mentioned, we don't want to ever take writes on two servers concurrently. Yeah, there are a few useful resources. One, we blogged about how, how we are uh, achieving performance isolation in a multi-tenant database environment. Uh, it's a good overview, talks about the setups on PG Bouncer, HA Proxy, and in general, in general around our health checks. We also have open sourced um, our fork of PG Bouncer. Thank you very much. Um, if there is any questions, I'm happy to answer. Big thank you to Vignesh, and he should be joining us uh, virtually as well here. Vignesh, are you able to hear me? Uh, yes, I can, Dylan. Excellent. We can hear you, and we should be able to see you shortly as well. Yes, there you are. Great. Thank you so much for your talk, and thank you for joining us. As a reminder, anyone in the audience, please just raise your hand. We'll come around to you with a microphone, and you can also ask questions in the stream. Looks like we already have a question here. <clears throat> there is already a question online. So this is related to, you mentioned in your bio, you're the creator of spinup.host. So would you share with us uh, more about spinup? What, it, what is it and what does it provide? Um, yeah, sure. Um, interesting. So spinup is basically an open source version of RDS. If you think about it, you know, there are so many managed or uh, like a relational database services provided by the hyper clouds, uh, but it, it's pretty much open source software and they have, you know, frameworks. Uh, so basically SpinUp is trying to replicate that. Um, it, it's currently supporting Postgres. Um, the, the features that currently it's uh, able to provide is one backups. Uh, and, and then the next one is monitoring. So you, you are able to get uh, RDS like a feel, but completely open source. You you can post it on you know uh, any any bare metal. Even it can it can run in Raspberry Pi, um, and just like that you get a connection string and you can connect it to uh, SpinUp. Uh, SpinUp right now doesn't take care of uh, failovers and and some of the other other features that some of the managed services provides. Um, I created it mostly because you know I have seen it in in my previous workplaces. Pretty much companies are you know kind of reinventing the wheel of trying to build their in-house RDS like uh, service. So that's where it is. Uh, it's available open source github.com slash spinup dash host and uh, you should be able to see all the code there. Great, thank you. We have one in the live audience. Hi, thanks for the talk. Um, I'm wondering how your solution does compare to existing other ones. So uh, Petroni is one that comes to my mind in particular. Sure. So Petroni is the, is the orchestration or high availability tool which takes care of, uh, you know, if things go down and then uh, they kind of promote the, the new primaries and whatnot or remove the replicas. I, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, Patroni itself does the load balancing itself. 
Yeah, it uh, does. It also uses H epoxy. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, that's that's good then. But unfortunately, we don't use Petroni. We use Stolon. And Stolon doesn't use any or, or provide any feature to, uh, to do this uh, load balancing ray traffic. So that's why we we end up using HA proxy on in, in front of Stolon. Okay, thanks. So yeah, I mean, I, I haven't really looked at Petroni's and HA proxy integration, how they are doing, but it, it should be pretty much same. We have one more in the audience. Hello. Um, I noticed that you are using else checks to uh, to verify that the server is uh, the master or uh, is, is in a state that we are, you are waiting for. But um, in case this is uh, not true anymore, the server will uh, be marked down. However, you have nothing to kill existing connections. So um, you could still have some traffic uh, on existing connections, which is delivered to uh, the backup, uh, not to the backup, sorry, to the, to the previously use the server as long as the connections are not killed. And for this, we have um, a specific keyword on the server lines, which is on error. And uh, I don't remember exactly the, the possibilities, but there is something like a shutdown connection or something like this. I don't remember exactly the term. But in my opinion, you should have a look at this. Uh, unless you already use something uh, similar in a way or another, but I don't know. Yeah, good suggestion. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely look at that keyword. Uh, but the way currently it does is one, our connections, uh, our connections are short lived. Uh, so irrespective of it, our connections get killed. Uh, and then the other option is also we have like client timeouts, etc. on the client side. So any of these disruptions happen, we, we are able to take care of them fairly quick. Uh, then the last problem is that even 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 if it happens, let's say there is there are existing connections. So, so what's the worst case? Um, because HA proxy takes care of not sending the right traffic to multiple instances. That that's the biggest thing that we're trying to avoid. If it sends the read connections to a primary database, that's still fine. So, uh, so so far, I haven't seen any any kind of you know negative performance or any data data mismatch or or none of these issues because of the existing connections uh, to from my experience. But irrespective of it, I will I will definitely take a look at the keyword that you recommended. Thanks. Great. That's all the time that we have for questions. Vignesh, once again, thank you so much for your talk. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.